Imagine working at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant without a radiation monitor. NHK has learned that Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, has not provided each employee at the dangerous facility with a monitoring device, breaking government rules. High levels of radiation have been detected at the Daiichi Power Complex following a series of hydrogen explosions that have scattered radioactive substances. TEPCO says the quake destroyed many radiation monitors, so in some work groups, only leaders have them, leaving others to fend for themselves. The government requires companies to provide each worker with a radiation monitor when they are placed under such conditions. A worker at the plant spoke out. Since the number of monitors is limited, only one or two devices are handed to each group. So as long as you stay with a member with a monitor, you'll know to what extent you are exposed to radiation. But sometimes you have to move away from that person, and in that case you'll never know the level of your exposure. He also says workers are increasingly worried about their health. Some workers called it quits and just left for home. My gut feeling is that I want to get it over with and get out of here. TEPCO says those without monitors are assigned to low radiation work and that safety measures are in place. Japan's health ministry says in a nuclear power plant accident you never know when or where you're exposed to high levels of radiation. It also says it plans to investigate TEPCO's safety management. A member of Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission spoke about the IAEA recommendation on Thursday, and he explained how the radiation measurement methods differ. A member of the commission, Seiji Shiroya, says the commission is measuring the radiation dose in the atmosphere, in dust, and the radiation level in food items. He said Japan's criteria for evacuation are based on these things while the IAEA is measuring contamination on the surface of grass. So he believes that what the Commission is measuring is more accurate in terms of radiation on humans. The Japanese government will conduct further detailed monitoring of radiation levels around Fukushima Daiichi and watch how the situation changes. The Tokyo Electric Power Company is going to use a synthetic resin to try and prevent radioactive dust from becoming airborne or being washed into the sea. The company will try using the resin around the reactor buildings from Thursday. The resin solidifies and becomes water resistant when it dries. TEPCO wants to check if it will contain the contamination before using it more widely. TEPCO wants to check if it will contain the contamination before using it more widely. The Tokyo Electric Power Company is stepping up efforts to remove radioactive water from the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. It has been hampering work to cool the reactors. On Thursday, the company transferred the radioactive water from a tunnel at the number one reactor building to a storage tank to prevent it from flowing into the sea. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the water level in the tunnel has dropped by about a meter. Radioactive iodine and cesium have been found in water in tunnels outside the numbers one to four reactor buildings and in the basements of their turbine buildings. TEPCO emptied the turbine condenser at the number three reactor building so it could be used to transfer the contaminated water in the basement. Similar work is being done at the other reactor buildings. TEPCO also plans to use a synthetic resin around the reactor buildings to prevent radioactive dust from becoming airborne or being washed into the sea. The resin solidifies and becomes water resistant when it dries. TEPCO wants to check if it will contain the contamination before using it more widely. Seawaters off the coast of Japan's crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is even more polluted. The country's nuclear safety agency says new tests showed a major spike in radioactive iodide. It rose to 180 becquerels per cubic centimeter on Wednesday, more than 4,300 times the legal limit. That is the highest level recorded so far in the seawaters off the plant. <laughs> We saw a higher level of radioactive iodine-131, 330 meters south of a water outlet of the plant. 
The level is 4,385 times higher than the legal standard. The half-life of the iodine-131 is eight days, which is, I think, short enough not to affect human health immediately. If we consider people eating seafood, the amount of iodine-131 would be lower by the time they actually eat it. Hidehiko Nishiyama of the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency added that high levels of radioactive materials such as cesium-134 and 137 were also found in seawater on Wednesday. Cesium-134 has a half-life of more than two years. The half-life of cesium-137 is around 30 years. Nishiyama also said it is important to continue monitoring radiation data and take action to prevent radiation levels from rising further. Inside the nuclear plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company workers are dealing with the radioactive water they found in the tunnels outside some of the reactor's turbine buildings. They are trying to prevent the contaminated liquid from flowing into the sea. Right now, the focus is on number one's tunnel. Workers have transferred radioactive water from there into a storage tank. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the water level in the tunnel has dropped by about a meter. Radioactive iodine, iodine and cesium have been found in water and tunnels outside the number one, two, and three reactor units and in the basements of their turbine buildings. TEPCO is also working to remove the contaminated water out of the basements. The company plans to use a synthetic resin around the reactor buildings to prevent radioactive dust from becoming airborne or being washed into the sea. The resin solidifies and becomes water resistant when it dries. TEPCO wants to check if it will contain the contamination before using it more widely.